Oh, what do you think of that? You didn't expect that to happen, did you? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't expect that shit and it happened. It happened. It went down. It went down. What's going on? <laughs> Ooh. What? What the fuck? Confused the shit out of people. What? <laughs> Ta -da! Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. It's all, prof it's all professional now, man. We've got this shit fucking wired up. Ready to go. It's all good. I'm, I'm hype. I'm hype. I'm hype as fuck. That was a well good intro. <laughs> Mr. Ghosty's work once again. Laying down that law. Well, how are you doing, my fine people? My wonderful, wonderful live stream audience. And of course, all you people out there in YouTube land. Uh, where all the streams is definitely going to say, Hey, YouTubers. What up? Uh, all those wonderful thousands and thousands of people who watch us on YouTube who can't make us live, which makes us, makes us sad to miss out on the bants. But of course... It's all going on this week, isn't it? Not only did we have the awesomeness of Resident Evil 7 and the uh, sadness that was Merc, but we also had, of course, the drama in the World First Race. The drama of the World First It's serious business now, the World First Race, you know? There's uh, Russians involved. Definitely some sort of US interference going on somewhere. We've got sabotage. We've got potential sabotage going on over here. We've got people... Hiding in instances. We've apparently got um, members of the World First Race who need flasks because they didn't have any ready uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So the date for the tickets is wrong, mate. Is it? It's tomorrow. There you go. Uh... Idiot! Oh, is it tomorrow? Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me do... I, I should do that in case anyone watches it. You know what I did? I probably just looked up and didn't change it. All right. Is that just fuck? That went to the end. Don't do that. Do that. There we go. Sorted. And it's all good, right? Now, we'll talk about the World First Race tomorrow at the web show. <laughs> we'll talk about the World First Race tomorrow at the web show, where maybe we've got some more information. Maybe there's more leaks, right? Maybe the WikiLeaks will get involved. Maybe we'll find out something. Maybe we'll get more information, more juiciness being leaked out into the world. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And maybe we'll even see a boss die, which is the whole point of the World First Race. Maybe we'll see something along those lines. That would be kind of funny. Uh, insiders. I avoided it. I got. I started getting questions as to whether I had a contact at Blizzard who might be able to help with uh, the instance not working. And I was like, well, you, you believe I have more power than I do. <laughs> they won't even put me on the launcher, right? <laughs> they won't even put me on the launcher. No, I don't have anything like that. Uh, and then it all kind of went pear shape. But I recommend if you don't know what's currently going on and you want to get up to date for tomorrow's web show, uh, check out MMO Champion, where literally the best thread of all time is currently going on. It's uh, I think it was 122 pages before we uh, launched the stream. It's probably 130, 140 at this point. Something fucking crazy like that. Uh, but you can go check it all out there and get up to date on all the drama that's currently going on. We'll talk about it tomorrow. But of course, tomorrow is the big day where the PreachCon tickets go on sale. Uh, they'll be going on sale like at the start of the show, which is 8 p.m. London time. They'll be going on sale there. Uh, we'll be sending the link out to pick those up. So that happens literally tomorrow. Okay, that happens tomorrow. Again, if you're in like Australia, which is like the worst time ever for you, get in contact with me. I'll see if I can do anything. But we have had a lot of interest in like, can I get a ticket beforehand? It's like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Forever. There's only 200 tickets, right? There's only like 200 tickets. I can't give them all away. <laughs> I can't, I can't like pre-sell all of the tickets. That's not going to happen at all. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do and whether or not we can. We have like some volunteer spaces for obviously people who work there. We'll see if we can work something out there. I'll do my best to get everybody through the doors. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, the exact day of the web show is the 28th. It's tomorrow. If you're watching this live right now, it's tomorrow. It's literally tomorrow. Yeah, it's literally tomorrow. So there you go. All good stuff. All good stuff. Anyway, let's have our own little drama then. Let's have our own little drama in our little world that doesn't involve America or Putin or anything like that. And hopefully no one's camping my raid instance. That'd be, that would be really nice. I am uh, on my way to being very, very ill. So I'll point it out now. My voice is a little better because I'm doing drama. But at the during the stream today, my voice started to die pretty heavily. But uh, hopefully we can push through for one more hour. And then we get on. This is what happens when I set myself ridiculous legacy dates uh, during like Nighthold week and Mythics and stuff. And I'm like, sure, we can do this. No problem. And then I get ill. Uh, but there you go. No big deal. Okay. 
we're gonna kick off nicely because i have a really horrible story in here a really horrible dark hor and i'm sorry but it's the final story of someone who's given us at least five really good drama stories five really good drama stories uh so we will be finishing up with that one i don't know if i'm quiet <laughs> it's not rip it's not rip the legacy's not rip it's just you know I, I do i say silly things as most of the patreons do know they're always sending me messages like we stop setting dates for this shit and i'm like i'm really sorry uh but we'll, we'll get there i want to do the best i want to do the best uh we're gonna kick off with a noob story to warm us up yeah to get us hype to get us hype uh we're gonna we're gonna warm up with this one and then we're gonna get really dark and then i'm gonna bring it back up again there's a plan to the show there really is it's gonna start on high it's gonna bring us on down and it's going to bring us back up again. So it's going to be all fun. It's going to be all fun and bants. So let's start off with a little newbie story. Mm -hmm. There's no names in this one as far as I know. There's no names in this one as far as I know. So we're just going to go with this. Again, uh, I've come up with a new policy. So people can abuse me and then ruin it for everyone. But where I tend to read the beginning, like half-ish, make sure it's safe. And it's not going to take us down a particularly dark road. Or anything like that. Alright then, here we go. <clears throat> Hello, Breacher, Ghosty, and Chat. Hello! Hello to you, sir. My newbie story starts a few weeks after the release of World of Warcraft. When I was 12 years old, 12, me and my one year older brother had played lots of StarCraft and Warcraft 3 prior to the release of World of Warcraft. But we weren't at all excited for WoW since it looked gay. <laughs> well, that's it. Ah, gay game. Spotted. Done. Easy. All good. So we know where we're at. <clears throat> but soon enough... We found ourselves browsing the interwebs for more information about the game. I remember a particular screenshot on Blizzard's website of a gang of orcs straddling your favorite mount preach. Emma? Wee! <laughs> 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 I'm gonna get shot for that. <laughs> uh, my favorite mount. Orcs on my feet. Oh, the wolf! It's gotta be the wolf. It's gotta be the wolf. It's gotta be the wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big wolf. The big fat wolf. <laughs> the big fat wolf. We soon boarded the hype train, though. Choo choo, baby. And quickly convinced our parents to buy us a copy of the game. Our family had one PC that was good enough to run the game. Which, now you gotta put this into context, guys. This means there was more than one PC in the house, but only one capable of running WoW. So now put into context what those other PCs were. Yeah. And with only one copy of WoW, we had to share for a while. <laughs> so we've got the we've got the HP pavilion <laughs> with one copy of WoW, a 12-year-old and a 13-year-old. Rich bastards. <laughs> the rich bastards. I don't remember the specifics at the time, but there must have been arguments about who got to play when. Really? I, for one, am taken aback at the, the mere thought of two prepubescent teenagers arguing over a video game. That sounds shocking to me. However, and I shit you not. I shit you not, chat. Get your fake spam ready. The dream of every gamer kid was soon fulfilled. Our mom enjoyed watching us play the game. She would sit next to us when we played, and she even tried her own character once. <laughs> she made a dwarf female paladin. Fuck me, man. <laughs> wait, though. Wait, though. Wait, though. But she gave up on playing herself when she failed to make the 40 second run with the mug to Karanos in under 6 minutes at level 5. Ah, She probably had the mouse on the screen. You know when you see old people try and do that? You guys seen that? I gave my granddad, Rip, a mouse once and he literally put it on the screen and he was trying to move it around on the screen and stuff. 
Oh, oh, come on. Come on. Get good. Because <laughs> sad, right? She couldn't do the Karanos mug quest? Feels bad, man. It does. It feels bad, man. That shit is like just trying to tell you where Karanos is, right? If I remember right, that's all it has to do. It's just trying to tell you to go inside the inn. But her love of the game remained. And within maybe a month, our parents bought a second PC and a second copy of the game so we could both play at the same time. You were right, pair of cunts. It was worth them throwing down like a thousand dollars, probably, just to shut you the fuck up. Because you were driving everybody fucking crazy. You testosterone-filled dickheads. Just fucking going off at each other all the time. We know why. If you are not yet thoroughly jelly, if you're not yet thoroughly jelly... When we were stuck in instances that took longer than anticipated and it was time for din-dins. Mum would bring us food so we could eat by the computers. It was the good life. I'm not convinced. My kids shut the fuck down when it's dinner time. Yeah, the iron fist of death. If my son was to be playing like Dark Souls 6 or whatever and it's dinner time and I come into the room and I go, Oi! dickhead dinner time that's how i talk to my kids and he said i'm in the middle of something i'd literally pick up his pad break his nose with it and drag him by his hair into the dinner room all right probably just time to turn off no I, th I actually think a lot of parents do this the kids are being quiet look how quiet they are <laughs> look how quiet they are just leave them there just look let's just, just leave them there look at this peace and serenity that we have they have a pc each and they don't have to do anything <laughs> my first character was an undead warrior and i leveled together with a friend from school i can't remember what he played but i know his older brother had a level 60 orc warrior this i remember because when we were around level 30 my friend would tell me about this awesome ability his brother had called retaliation say a little prayer i couldn't find it in my spell book oh <laughs> But we eventually found a warrior trainer, and I paid handsomely for the skill. There were loads of other expensive spells I could buy from the trainer, like Heroic Strike Level 2. He said Serenity. <laughs> he said Serenity. Why would you buy Heroic Strike Level 2? But I already had Heroic Strike on my action bars. So why would I need another one? Right? <laughs> He thought about it. He's like, well, there's this new spell. There's this retaliation spell. Oh, there's Heroic Strike 2. But I already have a Heroic Strike on my bars. So why the fuck would I buy another one? This is stupid. I was content with the abilities I was given at level 1 together with retaliation. <laughs> I also leveled my warrior wearing basically only items of white quality. Wow. Yeah, triggered. As a motherfucker. Like, triggered as fuck. That's like, that's bad, man. Shame. That's bad, man. You, you can't just go Shame. around saying that on stream. Honestly, it's fucking embarrassing. It's embarrassing for you. It's embarrassing for me. But we'll continue on. <laughs> the Twitch chat loves it. Yeah, bring it in. We didn't understand stats. And we just went for whatever item had the highest amount of armor. As you can imagine, it took a long time to level wasn't the easiest thing i also remember at this time that my friend and i wanted to communicate by voice instead of in chat while leveling together luckily we both had home telephones so we would play for hours while talking on the phone <laughs> i love it i love it so much it's amazing it's such a kid thing to do well we want to talk via voice so how do we do this I've got a phone. <laughs> this quickly ended, however, when my dad saw the bill. <clears throat> and all, oh, and simultaneously realized that an, why an important call from work had never come. All right, who's with me? Old people. Some old people here. How many of you tried to, like, smother the modem when you had dial-up so your parents couldn't hear that you were going online? <laughs> you know what my dad started doing? started periodically just picking up the phones to see if I was on it. And they just scream upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> fun times man <laughs> good times he's like get off the internet i'm not on it and you instantly like unplug it i'm not on it 
So good. After a few months, though, my friend moved away and we stopped hanging out. Ah. So I leveled a human paladin on my brother's server, where he also had a human paladin. That's two paladins, yo. At this time, I was actually less of a noob and got to level 60 for the first time. <laughs> In the middle of the night, I assume. What are you doing? Got to download that porn clip from uh, Napster. <laughs> I'll have it in the morning. <laughs> it's going to be well good. The title says it's really good. <laughs> do you remember that, Andy? I do remember that. Do you remember Andy? downloading porn overnight and it was like a two minute clip and you had to go off the title for whatever it is? <laughs> I, I had a friend who used to download a lot of that. Yeah, he told me some funny stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, Jim, though, could get like dog porn so fast off Napster. He oh, like knew that. all the lowest. Uh... That's funny, that is it, mate. <laughs> no, it's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> but did he ever buy the level 2 heroic strike I don't know I don't think we'll get it I don't think we'll get it uh, okay <laughs> I, um, at the time I was the less of a noob because he hit level 60 so we're pretty good of course though we both played Retri I'm not sure if we knew we played Retribution because I don't think we used talent points properly but we did hold two handed weapons so that makes me ret yeah, my nephew often used to download dog porn and put it on my screen when we weren't in the room and then hope my dad would walk in. He'd you just... did it on my PC! But he gave us the idea. But well, you did it, mate! It was a funny... You follower! It was... She... it was a funny joke. You <laughs> I eventually found a guild that was recruiting for raids and I was accepted as a trial for Blackwing Lair. I have no idea why, though. I was told I was supposed to heal, but I had never healed before, so I wasn't sure how. So people told me to use gear with intellect on it and just spam flash of light on people. I solved the first issue by buying a helmet with intellect on it. The rest of my gear had zero intellect, but still, I did do what they said. The other issue was more difficult at first, since I did not have flash of light in my spell book. <laughs> I've got two, he's got two problems, right? He's got no intellect gear and he hasn't got flash of light. <laughs> so he's got to solve these issues. We're getting there, man. One step at a time. We've got a helm. It's got intellect on it, right? It's all good, man. It's all good. He's got this. <clears throat> I went to the paladin trainer and remembered, oh yeah, flash of light was that healing spell that heals less than holy light. So I'd never bought it. It's all good, man. It's all good. Why would why would I want a spell that heals less than the one I already have? It sounded stupid to me. But I obliged, anyway, and bought the spell. <laughs> I don't remember much about the Blackwing Lair when I was in. I remember we killed the first boss. I remember I had no idea what the hell was going on. And I remember being kicked from the guild the morning after. Oh, no. He gave it a try. No, but not sad. Will you stop laughing? It's not funny. He gave it a go. He got his helmet on, right? And he got his heel and he pressed it. He, got, he did everything they told him to do. Ah, oh, I bet he zoomed so fast. Oh my god. He must have casted like three heels and just been out of mana. <laughs> oh shit. I got sick of my paladin after this. It's the class that's wrong. Yeah, it's the class. No, no, no. You guys are fucking idiots. No, 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 no. All you guys are idiots. It's the class. You see, not the player, it's the class. And I decided it was time for a new character. This time I'm going mage. Yeah, I'm going mage. Eventually I got to level 60 again and my best friend told me he had just started playing and he had made an orc hunter on my server. Seeing as he was a complete noob and I was the wow master with two level 60s. <laughs> I was to be his guide. <laughs> <laughs> I remember at some point telling him that there was an epic sword <clears throat> that you could get in Zulfarak by combining two other swords together. Naturally, I told my friend that this sword would be amazing for him. <laughs> now, he was a hunter. Right? Hey, none of you had two level 60s, but no flash of light or heroic strike rank 2. <laughs> now, he was a hunter. And if you guys are familiar with the sword, it doesn't really have any stats. It has an effect that procs from melee attacks, but it was purple. Ah, ah, ah. It was purple, right? 
So, there you go. So, so I obviously assumed that it was definitely good for him. <laughs> so he found Zulfarak. And whenever one of the swords dropped, he would press need, get screamed at by the entire group, and he would retort by informing them <clears throat> that his friend had two level 60s and had told him that the sword was indeed good for hunters. He's got knowledge, right? He's got knowledge. No, 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 no. You keep you keep taking the piss, but he's got he's got this guy's got resources out, man. <clears throat> I remember him telling me about one guy especially who was furious that my friend won the item over him since hunters didn't use melee weapons. <laughs> Plot twist though, that guy was playing an enhancement shaman. <laughs> so the irony is there. <laughs> the irony is there. Vanilla was good times, right? Can never go back. You can, you can play it, but you'll never go back to what it was really like. Loads more happened on my noobish journey through WoW, but I learned slowly but surely. When TBC was about to be released, I remember farming honor for the epic dagger from Arathi Basin. <sighs> don't tell me. Oh, don't tell me. It's the one that had that black cloud around it, I think. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. Shit, that's going to annoy me. Someone's going to type it. Uh, <clears throat> oh, anyway. Okay. No, he was an undead mage now, Mitch. An undead mage. Yeah. <clears throat> I was getting this dagger to... Oh, it's a spell dagger. To prepare for the expansion. It took weeks. And I replaced the dagger day one in Hellfire Peninsula. Clown suits forever. I played through the Burning Crusade Wrath in the first tier of Kata before taking a break all the way till Wad. Now in Legion, I play a holy priest in a mythic guild ranked 10 on our server. We were all noobs at some point. Some of us more and longer than others. And that's my story. I hope you enjoyed. That was really cute. Where did mom go? Is she still playing? I need to know. I need to know. Where's mom gone? Right, we're going to do the sad story now. Yeah, this is happening. This is really happening. It's called My Last Drama. Oh. Oh, it comes with a picture though. Comes yeah, with a picture of a rose with a black background, like really fucking emo. -y. Oh, I'm not lying. This is should be trigger warning, mate. Trigger warning. Oh, trigger warning for real. Oh shit. <laughs> you ready to get sad with me? We're gonna bring it back up. Don't you worry. He said a dark story. Oh, it's sad and dark. It's all. It's all kinds of things. It's all kinds of things. But it's got wow in it. Is there nudes? <laughs> is there nudes? Right. Let's get some names up in this bitch. It's only a short one. Let's get some names Since of this wife. bitch. She did? <laughs> uh, Mate. What? Devastated, yeah. Just remember. What, penis? No. Nope. Oh, you're about to tell my story now. No. Alright. You're exciting me. <laughs> uh, okay, showcase. You can be in. I only want two names for this, actually. There's five in the story, but I know the other two aren't really in it too much. Let's have Showcase and... Uh, I need a lady. Who's going to be my lady? Angel, you could be my lady. You can be my lady. Although, you're not going to be much of an angel in this one. You're not going to sorry. Duda, duda. <laughs> All right, then. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get your feels bad, man, ready. All right. Hello, Preacher. I hope all is going well. I'm doing all right. This is my last drama from my history of WoW and also my best drama. Number five, Weeks on XT. The story begins in the Burning Crusade. Me, my mum and my stepdad all played since AQ40. But my mum and I didn't reach cap until the Burning Crusade. And being noobs and my parents clicking until late into the Throne of Thunder... They were really, really bad. This would lead us all into a guild. <laughs> this would lead us all into a guild for all of the expansion. During this time, all we ever did was raid Karazhan. Every week for the entirety of the Burning Crusade. The worst part, chat, is we only ever killed the curator twice before Wrath launched. It's a mummy, daddy, and kid guild. They're they're, they're progressing Karazhan. For a whole expansion, they're progressing Karazhan. For a whole... Two creator kills under their belts. Nailed it. 
<laughs> is it Nobble? No, Nobble never won. <laughs> oh, don't throw the Nobble under the bus. We played with Nobble UI today. It's pretty good. All right. During this time, though, we did become really close with another couple in the guild. So that's two couples that are in this guild. Two couples. <clears throat> and these two people would be Angel and Showcase. Showcase was a Tauren hunter and actually decent at the game. Whereas Angel was a Resto Druid and was utterly, utterly shit. As I said, we only raided Kara until Wrath hit. But they said, now that we have a new expansion, we're going to make the guild better. We're going to raid everything and clear all of it. Now, I know that we've only killed the curator twice. But what I'm telling you is when Wrath launches, we're going to have a fresh start and we're going to clear this bitch. Yeah? Get motivated. Get real. Get serious. We, all, we, haven't, we, we still haven't got Kara on farm. But in Wrath... We got this. We fucking... Yeah, we're going to make the guild great again, pretty much. We're going to make the guild great again. The guild did raid Nax, but never completed it. Now, I know you guys will say Nax was easy in Wrath, but they couldn't kill the first, uh, one particular boss. They could not seem to kill one particular boss. Any guesses? Any guesses where the creator guild fell down? They almost got there. Not patchwork. Not patchwork. I'll give you another three. Two, one. Tender pork ass cheeks. I'm so glad I got to say your name. Is correct. Thaddeus. This boss used to give me nightmares as every so often he would scream out stuff in a tormented voice. Ah! Oh, you're so young. Thaddeus is legitimately scary. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> the guild couldn't seem to kill this boss, and as such. Our guild never cleared Nax Ramus. Well, as time went on and on, we became closer and we found out that Angel and Showcase lived in Washington State and were only about 11 hours drive from us. Fucking Americans, man. <laughs> only 11 hours drive. My guild's arguing with me about a four hour drive for PreachCon. My family went and met them for a few days, hung out and generally became better friends. Yeah? We had a couples guild meeting. It was awesome. It was so good. So close, in fact, that my parents once paid for their cell phone bill and their WoW sub. <laughs> As you can see, folks, <laughs> this is where it goes a little south. Dirty south. We are, we are heading right into the bayou. As time went on, the Trial of the Crusader was released and eventually ICC. We got as far as the Blood Queen before we hit the wall. Our progression stopped, but we didn't care. We were friends, playing together all the time, hanging out, and just enjoying the company. Right? No. No. Just enjoying the company. It's just a bit of... It's, shut up, right? Blood Queen was real. Blood Queen was the shit. It's just fun. It's just fun. It's just all it's all good fun. <laughs> but then it all came crumbling down. Showcase and Angel disappeared. Missing three different raid nights. We thought something had happened. My stepdad called and called to no avail. Eventually, we got hold of Angel, who answered the phone, sobbing, saying, I'm so so sorry. I'm so sorry. What do you mean? we asked. Puzzled as to what happened. She hung up the phone, and we didn't hear from her or our Showcase for another week until we got a call from Showcase at 2am asking for a ride away from his house. My dad went and got him, and when we got to our house, we asked what happened. He told us you should know. He told us the reason why they'd asked our family to pay and help with bills, which they had done several times, was Angel was using drugs. But not only that, Showcase had just caught Angel blowing the purple pickle over another man. But what about Blood Queen, though? I know. We're going to find out. When I say I've never seen my stepdad this mad, I mean it. My stepdad went into the kitchen, poured a glass filled to the rim with straight rum, chugged it, and said, I'm going to bed. We'll deal with this in the morning. We spent the next month trying to figure out what to do with Showcase at our house, as he never seemed to leave. As time went on, 
Showcase decided he would go. He thanked us for being the best friends we ever had and promised to pay us back for everything we had done. Showcase called us to let us know he had got, got to where he was going and he was safe. And we later found out he got divorced and got their kid. We kept in touch with Showcase for a few more years. He did pay us back and came back and helped us eventually kill the Lich King. We haven't spoken to Angel though for a very long time and we don't know what happened to her. Lich King down, motherfuckers. No, you all thought he was going to fucking run away, didn't you? You bunch of bastards. This bunch of bastards here thought that Showcase was out of there. No, straight talker, straight shooter. Straight talker, straight shooter. And you want to know why? You want to know why he's a straight talker, straight shooter? You want to know why you can pay the bills of fucking Showcase? Legit mustache. As a motherfucker. Yeah? Straight up gangster mustache. Boom. That's why. If a guy like that says he needs a fiver to pay the fucking bills, showcase, mate, with that mustache, respect the mustache. Insta wet. <laughs> Instantaneously wet. <laughs> Look at that stash, right? What a fucking legend. That's right. I knew you were all going to judge. I knew you were all going to judge. And now you know. Now you know. Fucking legend. Showcase. Paying the bills. Got his daughter. Took it home. Too sweet. Now, I'm offended by the story. I'm only going to expose you to it once. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this story? I'll give you that brief glimpse so you don't spoil. <laughs> you will be dripping, you puss. <laughs> Comic Sans. I know. Motherfucker. Motherfucker sends me a story in Comic Sans. And then the first line of it is presented in Comic Sans for maximum effect. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Cringe. The cringe. The cringe. Right then. <coughs> So we need two guys and a gal. I like the way you've named them as lad, lad, and lass. I like that. That's fucking awesome. Lad, lass, and lass. Right, chill bro. My man, you're in. Chill bro could be lad one. Uh, who else are we having? Adrian. And a lady. Lady. I'm running out. Oh, Sarah. Oh, that's easy enough. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You only go by the name Sarah. I like it. I like it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, people. We're good. So we got Chill Bro, Adrian, and Sarah. We need a guild name. Hey, Adrian. Yeah, never forget. Hallowed be the Adrian. What a guy. We need a guild name. You guys can... Uh... <clears throat> Edgelord McWeavington? I don't think so. Okay, hollow preacher man in a single hand wave, followed by a casual hello to Andy. Hello. hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. As well as the fuck have you got me saying here? Written in Cotton Sand Comic Sans. Vohayo. As well as Vohayo. Or hey guys, depending on your preference, to the snarky group of Bantasaurus Rexes that make up your Twitch chat. The guild name is Legendary Stash. Claimed. <laughs> You're a bunch of Bantasaurus Rexes. There you go. This story comes to you from the foothold of the Commonwealth in the Americas. Team Canada. Team Canada. <laughs> what is that emote? That's awesome. <laughs> well, how do you say this? Vohayo? Is this... This, uh... Oh, God. Is it Weibo? Oh, God. I got so... Oh, my God. It's an emote. You trolled me. You bastard. What a fucking player. What? He sent me a Twitch emote in the story. Ah. <laughs> well fucking played. Crack well fucking. Dude. Shit. Well played. Well fucking played. That's quality. That's quality. It's the first time in like a long time that anybody has caught me out like that. Well done, sir. You get gold stars. All right. Uh, <clears throat> 
All right, let's get the backstory. Yeah, I got played then. <laughs> you totally we yeah, I absolutely outweaved. I like it. All right, so we're from Canada, which means you're a nice guy. Although your Comic Sans and your use of the uh, Twitch emote tells a different story. If you'll allow me a bit of fun, I'd like, I'd like your chat to guess whether I'm male or female based on my class race combination. He wants to play with you guys. We're getting toyed with here. He's tickling my nuts, but he's not stroking the shaft. Because you keep saying he, so it's a dude. Could be a she, in which case, caress the balls worth the shaft. Come on now. All of my characters are blood elf females, and my main has always been a rouge. <laughs> Ragnar Socks white knighting the fuck out of the chat. I do not assume genders. I stand tall and proud. <sighs> male, male, girl, male, girl, male, 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 <laughs> male. Ooh, 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 okay. Wrong, all of you. I is, in fact, transsexual. Boom. Outplayed again. <laughs> Three paragraphs in. He's played us all. <laughs> They've played us all. Good God almighty. <laughs> <clears throat> he actually says i am in fact a tranny if you don't want to use that word i understand transgender will do i don't know i'll go with tranny that's what you used are we good i have many stories i could submit as i started playing in that burning crusade that's technically not true <laughs> what is this writing <laughs> this is the sentence i started playing in the burning crusade that's technically not true that's technically not true. I made an account on level to 10 in vanilla, but it was buggy as fuck as well as clunky, not to mention the whole thing of getting a quest in one zone, having to go back to the one you just came from, and then back to the other zone, was a pain in the ass. Yes, it was. Rexar, never forget. He can be anywhere in two zones. Good luck. He walks along a very, very long road. So, yeah. Anybody remember that quest? Maybe. The story comes to you from way back when, yes of course, I'm talking about last week. The story is from last week, when the Nighthold first launched and everybody was scrambling to get in the instance and get that sweet, 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 sweet loot. Sweet, 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 sweet loot. Now before we get started, a bit of backstory in both me and my guild. I'm from Wormrest Accord, US, sometimes known as the home of the Elitist RP Guilds. And players in general who will bite your fucking head off if you dare do anything that isn't supported by at least three Uno Dos Tres, three canon references in Warcraft lore. That's right. Get fucking serious. Get fucking serious. Get serious. This is a bit of an exaggeration, of course. But I will admit we have our fair share of assholes that are stuck way too far up Blizzard's plot hole. Now, I don't know about canon, but I would not survive on that realm, I don't think. <laughs> I would not do well. I would not do well. I definitely was very interested in the Mage Class Hall campaign. I definitely didn't start skipping it immediately. Definitely not. Because lore, though, bro. It's called Fellow Malone. Kael'thas used to have it. So, there you go. Troll murderer. That one. For myself and my ex-guild, we or they are a group of chill ex-role players who raid on a serious level on the weekends but do casual content like Mythic Plus on the weekdays. The guild name is Legendary Stash. And before the events of this story, I felt like they were my family. That's how close we were. Boom. Close. With that information, you can probably guess the general atmosphere of the guild chat. <clears throat> We liked a bit of bants. <laughs> it always starts that way. We liked a bit of bants. We did like a bit of bants. Okay. <clears throat> We're pretty laid back on the whole, and more or less had a sort of sibling rivalry attitude permeating the guild chat. We talk shit to each other constantly, but we were tearing to someone else for doing the same to one of ours, right? I could call you a fuckwit, but if anyone else calls you a fuckwit, then we've got trouble, right? That's what we're saying. Nothing eventful happened on the first day of release. I couldn't get into many groups, and the ones I did never got past Scorperon. Scorperon normal, man. The real wall. The real barrier. That's where the real fir world first drama starts. It starts with Scorperon normal. H how do we do it? How? What do we do? I don't know. 
don't know. Tough stuff. The next day, however, things got good. I joined a random group. <laughs> Gill breaker. Scarborough on the Gill breaker. Things got good. I joined a random group started by a torn hunter named Chilbro. He was nice, a good chap who joked around and made sure everyone got summoned in a timely manner. That's right. Yeah. Adrian joined shortly after I did, and I was surprised. Adrian was a member of my guild. Not just any member of my guild. He was one of the two co-GMs. Oh, yeah. Adrian didn't say anything to when he first joined. In fact, he didn't say anything. He stayed quiet for most of the raid. And I didn't give it much thought until after we downed Tychondrius about two hours later. That's right, you heard me right. Our little pug got to Tychondrius. Now, this is where I fall down as a human being. I don't know how hard Nighthold is on normal for appropriately geared people. I have no idea. I don't do alt runs in any way. I go with my mage and then we blow it up and then we win. And I don't I don't go to guild alt runs either. Unless, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. <clears throat> but the pug got to Tychondrius. But not only that, we one shot all the bosses we did that night, including a ninja pulled a Luriel. After Alluriel, we went to Croesus. A few people died like idiots and got roasted in raid chat for, for it to everyone's amusement. Everyone except Adrian. He spoke up in our guild chat while he was dead under the broken bridge. You know, this sort of attitude is why this guild is going to shit. You know? This is it. This sort of attitude is why the guild's going to shit. Just want to remind you, you died on the bridge on Croesus. Stunned silence rang out in the guild chat. Mostly because no one knew what the fuck Adrian was talking about. It was then that Sarah, the other co-GM, piped up saying, Oh, God, don't do it. If someone comes out with this random ass mutt, look, life advice with preacher and ghost. If someone comes out with this random ass comment out of fucking nowhere, the last thing you do is go, What happened? This is the most attention seeking nonsense I've ever seen in my entire life. Edgelog, mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's such a Facebook post, is what it is. But, Sarah. Sarah. What's wrong? And of course, what did Adrian, the fucking Edgelog, reply with, Andy? Don't matter. Correct. Told you. It's correct. Is <laughs> Nothing, says Adrian. Nothing. Oh, really? Because you just typed this enormous caps lock fucking spam message. But of course you're fine. Moments later, it then says, This pug is shit talking me because I died on Croesus. I just said that because I was a little bit mad. Don't worry about it, though. So Sarah, like a boss, went, all right, I won't. <laughs> Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> oh, God, if my wife could do that, that would be the happiest day of my life. What's wrong? Nothing. Good. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> so everyone went on with their bants in the guild chat, including laughing their tits off at our local demon demon hunter edgelord, who got the shitty legendary that gives you regen when blur is active and started going on a rage about it in chat. After Croesus was dead, that's when we moved on to Tychondrius and downed him with the same level of ease we've been downing bosses all night. And then for some unknown reason, the group disbanded entirely. I shit you not. After one shotting over half of the bosses in Nighthold on the second day of release in a fucking pug, everybody just left. I still have no idea why. After spending two hours trying to find a reason why we didn't just do the rest of the fucking raid, I got my answer. Adrian. Adrian had been sowing dissent the entire time. Sabotage. See the way I fit this into today's theme? You like it? <laughs> you like it? Sabotage. Mate, I can't stand it. What? I know you planned it. I know I did plan it. 
That's the, the, the intro of the song Sabotage, mate. <laughs> by the Beastie Boys. Oh, I'll never forget. <laughs> what? You ever seen Star Trek? Didn't use it once, but twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In space, no less. In space, no less. Very good. Adrian. Adrian had been sowing dissent the entire time. Telling Chilbro that I had been personally giving him shit about his low DPS. And that I was harassing other members of the group as well. As it turns out, Chilbro is either gullible as hell or really thick. He believed every word of it and left the group after Tychondrius, having put me on ignore without even asking if I had actually been doing these things or not. It was then that the bombshell dropped. I was not prepared for this. I saw Sarah whisper me, and what I read had been disbelief. Adrian and I have been talking, and we think you're not providing a very positive image of our guild when you do pug content. I'm sorry. You're going to have to leave the guild. As I was talking things out with Sarah, Adrian piped up in guild chat and asked me an innocuous question. Mate, 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 remind me what Vanish does for rogues again. Makes us look bad. I'm confused. I just start typing back. Uh, they increase your dodge chance. Why? Adrian then. Then you should be able to dodge this! And I was kicked from the guild. <laughs> hey, Andy, what does Vanish do? Way! Way! Adrian is the Bant's commander, I like it. He's the total Bant's commander. Way! And I was kicked from the guild. Well played, wrecked. I'm still trying to get in contact with the officers of the guild as I write this. As I liked my guild. But I fear too much damage has already been done. As I've seen nearly seven other close friends of mine kicked out of the guild as well. It seems that Sarah and Adrian are on some sort of rampage. So here I am. Talking to you and talking to your chat. Trying to either get back in the guild or form a new one. With the refugees who suffered the wrath of Adrian. Mm hmm. Oh no, I think he fits all the, car the, the cards similar. I think he works well. But until then, I'll just have to keep sifting through Group Finder. Looking for groups that don't require 685 for normal high uh, night hold. Which are depressingly hard to find. Hope you enjoy my little story. I've been meaning to submit one for years, but I never had the courage to do so. But I said in a recent drama, if I don't write it, I definitely won't read it. Correct. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Firstly, before we give out advice, which we like to do here, because we're all, we all know the truth of everything, right? <laughs> before we give out advice, did you actually do anything in that chat? Did you? Maybe not to Adrian. Maybe not to Adrian, but did you do something to everyone else? Eight six five. There you go. Eight six five. Whatever. You know what I mean? You know he did, right? There must have been some... You must have been throwing some fucking shade in that pug. A little bit. A little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know that. Right. Where? <laughs> oh, my God. So, we've got a story here written by a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. It comes in multiple formats, which I love. How long have we got? We've got 10 minutes. We can do this. We can do this. We're going to gonna, we're gonna have to go fast. We're going to have to do this. I, uh, I haven't read this story, actually. I've mistimed it, so this could be random. But it's written by a lawyer, so hopefully it's going to be good. Well, I assume our man's got low gear. Ha! <laughs> sued! <laughs> you got sued. He wrote the story, but I took him out of context. Uh, okay. Rarak. 
We need a raid leader. We need best DPS. Who's best? Who's going to be best DPS? Let's have Pete. Hey, Phoenix! Let's have Pete. Pete could be best DPS. And a raid leader. I'm a little worried about this story. We'll see how it goes, but this guy's called Dead Raider. Now, that might mean in the raid, R-I-R-L. We'll see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see where we go there. Uh, and Reynolds. <laughs> Not for you, Jeff. <laughs> I know that's what you're thinking. Right, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, one of the titles of the characters is Dead Raider. We'll see. We'll see. All right, here we go. Let's go fast. We've got 10 minutes. Hello, Preacher. Go see if he's there. Hello. Oh, From the center of Team America. That's Kansas City, y'all. Yeah? Kansas City. This is my second story to you. The first being how the stripper killed the guild. Oh, I don't remember that one. I never remember any of our drama stories. I remember the stripper killing the guild. Andy knows. It was such a thrill to see my story read by you, and for your wife to be a part of the story confirming the rules. I should remember that for sure. The only regret was that Ghosty was not present. I'm sure he would have added wonderfully com wonderful commentary as to the rules between my wife, myself, and the strip club for the bachelor party. Oh, I do remember this. Reminder of rule number one, don't blow the mortgage. Rule two, don't get blown by the stripper. Uh, I do. Uh, yeah, I've, all right, the chat totally remembers. Everybody here totally remembers. Live for I've enjoyed your content completely free from the YouTubes. And since I'm still broke from my mortgage, diapers, organic whole milk, and now a seemingly infinite amount of plastic toys from China via Amazon for my one-year-old. Yep. I felt guilty enough to take my time from work, the kiddo, and the artifact power grind to write you another drama time story so I can contribute in some small way to the good cause that is drama time. A good cause. How many of you would, re would recommend our show as a good cause? A force for good. <clears throat> I don't know. This is not so much of a story, but more a homage to the best guild leader I've ever had. What made me think of this is that my raid team has gone through three changes in the raid leader position since Legion launched. Oh, shit. And it made me recall fondly of this one legend. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> At least Benji's honest. <laughs> At least uh, I can't trust you, Siren. A force for justice. I'll take that. A force for justice. In honor of our lawyer author. All right. I'll take you back to the times when men were men and DKs were overpowered. The Lich King had declared war on the races of Azeroth and us champions were called to aid the resistance to the Scourge in the chilly region of Northrend. Up here. I was raiding Nax with a cesspool guild. <laughs> that went from something really epic to something really bad so fast. I was raiding Nax with a cesspool guild, dominating the meters, yelling at idiots who could not do the dance. Hi, can never forget. I'm believing that I was the best raider ever. After several attempts to clear 10 man without a death. Ah, oh, the undying. Not even the immortal, bro. The undying. Even Andy has the undying. You're after a slap, aren't you, mate? But you can't, though. You know why? Because you're immortal. <laughs> Doesn't that mean that you don't feel pain, either? Uh, mine does. Because I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. After several attempts to clear 10 man without a death. I joined a pug who was going for that shiny title. This was when I met... Rorak. I was 20-something postgraduate student and still had a sense of loyalty to the guild I was in. I had declined a few offers to join better guilds because of this loyalty to the cesspool guild. But when we completed our run with ease and I got the title of Undying, the request from Rorak to join him in a progression guild was just too strong. He thinks I can't hear it. I can hear it. You can't hear shit. You can hear it warm up if I was doing anything. Do you often sit like that at your desk? Mate, I am hugging my pudding. Look at this. Look at this concealment. <laughs> look, not obvious in the least, right? <laughs> I often just lean back on. What are you doing? I'm, in, I'm moderating the chat. <laughs> moderating the chat. <laughs> very, very inconspicuous. Very inconspicuous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ha ha ha! I wasn't money to chat. Oh, you motherfucker! It was a ruse. Ha ha! Ghost win! Ghost win! Ha ha ha! 
Okay, <laughs> it's a ruse. <laughs> it was all a ruse. Okay. <clears throat> Apparently, I had impressed Rorik enough that I, I should get a shot in the 25-man team. I decided, fuck loyalty, get perps. Typed in guild, it's been real. <laughs> Alright, I want the chat to be honest with me here. I know we're running out of time, but I just want to say... For those of you who've quit a guild feeling like you're a hero, what did you type as your last comment? Andy must have a few. Probably fuck y'all. <laughs> sort of like it's been real. Catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Some shit like that. And quit like a boss. After a few weeks of raiding with this new guild, I learned more about raiding than I ever had in BC. Mostly because of Rorak. Rorak was a certified genius. IRL, he was a professor of game theory and mathematics. Doesn't that mean he like a code breaker for Russia? At a prestigious university on the East Coast that costs something like $100,000 he dues a year to go to. He also taught in the philosophy department simply because he enjoyed it. For laughs. For fucking laughs. For giggles, mate. Teach his philosophy. For giggles, mate. Yeah? For giggles. As a philosopher mathematician, the man was an enigma. Oh yeah, an enigma. He once sent me a research paper on game theory, and I swear to you, preacher, I can understand the following words. The game theory conclusion and postulate. Yeah? Boom. The rest was either an, uh, an 11 spell, completely made up rubbish, or just words that nobody quite, nobody but super turbo smart nerds used to make the rest of us feel stupid. I'm not a dumb guy. I have a job that requires a lot of school and a license, so I like to think that I have above average intelligence, but this guy was several degrees more inter intelligent than anybody I'd ever met on the internet, who, as you know, are mostly window lickers. Your chat is excluded. You guys are safe, right? I just want to say, he might have called the internet in general window lickers, but he intentionally excluded you guys feel good about it this man's brain brought up the average iq of our raid by at least 27 points by itself however being super turbo smart maketh not a good raid leader now i can vouch for that <laughs> almost triggered Woo, safe <laughs> and then comes moose with like well i mean i, I like windows so i don't know <laughs> now i'm confused what makes a good raid leader the usual, he would have strategies that played to our strengths. He would simplify things so that the idiot DPS could avoid fire and do max damage. He would place markers on targets, places to stand before and during the fight. Not to mention he was a solid player. He could play any class but played a druid like me. Easily switching from bear to tree to moon kids, whatever the raid needed. Pretty standard for a good raid leader. What made him great? What made him great? was that he had a sixth sense ability where he would make a call mid-pull that would save the raid down the boss make progression whether it was focusing deeps on the boss ignoring ads calling for hero when it wasn't planned to get through a situation the man was just instinctively knew the flow of a fight i made more than one save in all my time what made him the best though what made him the best was how he would call out people who fucked up as I told you earlier, he was a professor of philosophy. In that course, he taught strictly by the Socratic method. He believed in this method so much, he applied it to his raid leader philosophy. Instead of yelling at idiot DPSs to get out of fire, or for not doing their jobs, or just being a jerk to get things done, he would calmly ask them a series of questions until they admitted that it was them that fucked up. Oh, this has got to be gold. This is going to be gold. Sometimes to switch it up, he would ask questions to someone else who had clearly had no clue what was going on. But they would discover the answer and find out it was someone else who messed up. This way, if he asked you a question, you weren't sure if it was you who fucked up or if someone else did. Either way, he would learn. people would learn to be better. Are you ready? Now, this, now the following is completely fabricated, I will admit. But it's probably roughly close to an actual discussion we would have. So, this is a raid wipe at Lord Morrigar. You ready? Now, I will do the voice of... Uh, this first voice is going to be our man. The raid leader. Sorry, I need a pipe or something. Hold on, I got a pipe. Catch it, Croc. Now, don't break that. Hey. DPS. Oh, this, that's the name. Okay, so look, we need a DPS. All right. Hey. 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 Hey.
Hey, Pete, can you tell me why we wiped here? Pete? Well, mate, it looked like three people died before me, and then I got killed because I got no heals for, like, five seconds. Why do you think that you received no heals for five seconds? Well, probably because the healers were healing the tank and not focusing on the raid. <laughs> this is where it gets dark, right? What evidence do you have that they were focusing on the tank and not the raid? Obviously, three people died before me, so the raid wasn't getting healed, though. Do you know why the three people died before you? Because they didn't get healed. Told you that. How can I verify or disprove this assumption? Look at the logs. It should tell you who's healing who. Don't ask me. Okay, let's explore that theory. Can you link me Reynolds' death log? So, of course, Pete, here's a link to the death log. Can you tell me what it says? It looks like every one of our healers got a heal on him in the six seconds before his death, so it must be Reynolds' fault for not using a defensive cooldown. Can you tell me what he died to? Is it something that a defensive would help keep him alive? Well, it says Bone Spike Graveyard, so he died on a Bone Spike. Is that something that Reynolds could have avoided? No. Is that something that Reynolds could have lived with with heals and a cooldown? No. So how do we keep Reynolds alive through Bone Spike? You free him. And how do you do that, Pete? DPS it. Did that occur, Pete? No. So what is your new conclusion, Pete? It's the DPS's fault for not freeing him. Is there some way we can see who did not DPS the Bone Spikes, Pete? Logs. Logs, mate. Got logs. Who did that? Now, Pete... Can you link me the damage done to the bone spike? So Pete links the damage. Thank you, Pete. So who is not on the list that should be doing bone spike damage? Shadow Priest didn't do any damage, and the Paladin didn't do any damage. Is there someone who is not at all on the list, Pete? Yeah, me. Peter? Can you tell me why you didn't hit the bone spike? Just look at the damage I was doing to the boss, though. I did more to the boss than anyone else. Now, Pete, is your damage more important on the boss or actually killing the boss? Killing the boss? I agree, Pete. So what are you going to do on the next pull? DPS the bone spikes. And that, my friend, is how he does it. Now, I could think of an easier way, which would be sending Big Mike with his logs, who says things like this. Pete, you dick. DPS the bone spike or you're out of the raid. And that's how Stark Team 1 does it. But I do like this man's style. I like it. It's got moxie. It's got bones. Right, we're three minutes late. This was my best attempt at a Socratic dialogue. The man was a genius. He could demonstrate how idiotic you were through a series of simple questions. But the funny thing was, it worked. And most raiders didn't feel like he was calling them out, even though he obviously was. Now, some people couldn't take this and would quit as soon as he started his series of questions. <laughs> but the people that stuck around were his troops. Raiders learned the mistakes they made and rarely did them again. If he targeted you for questions, it felt like you just let down your dad. He had that level of authority. I was more afraid of him targeting me than I was of my own dad finding out that it was me who broke his college championship trophy when I was six. Never forget. Anyways, I raided with Rorak throughout Wrath and most of Kata. When he left the game shortly after the announcement of Pandaland, I quit shortly thereafter, as I didn't think I would ever find a raid leader as great as him. Then Blizzard hit to me with the nostalgia. I took one hit of Warlords and I'm back to the addiction that is well. Thanks for reading my story once again, Preacher. Ah, oh, that was cool. That was a very, very cool story. Thank you so much for sending that from Team Kansas. Thank you very much. Good fun. I hope I did justice for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done for today. Oh my god. Oh, the reverse shot is so much worse. Like, so much worse. You gotta stop wearing your Bruce Lee pants into the office. Comfy pants, mate! <laughs> Ladies and gents, we're off! Preach card goes on sale tomorrow uh, in 27 hours. 20, yeah, 27 hours from now. Whoa, hi, waifu. Hi. You all right? 
PreachCon. Yeah, PreachCon down tomorrow. So hopefully I'll see you then. If not, we'll see you Monday. All right, guys. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye. Very grown up. Very mature. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>